Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Emily and the Emily that is part of this channel is not a figment of the imagination. I'm real, I'm back. I'm sitting down to film my first video in almost two months and nothing crazy has really happened. I've just kind of been in a rut in kind of every single aspect of my life. And whenever I thought about filming it, I just thought I had nothing to film nothing to show you so here I am sitting down put on makeup for the first time in again like two months and I haven't been reading but over the past two months I have been acquiring a lot of books so I figured I would come back and do just a quick book haul of the books that I've gotten so far this summer over the past two months. This is just a disclaimer. I did not spend a ton of money on these books. Uh, this is in no way to make anyone feel like they need to go out and spend a ton of money on books. There are lots of ways to get books for free. I actually used a bunch of store credit that I had at a used bookstore to get most of these books. Some friends gave me, I went to other used bookstores, and I think none of them I got from major booksellers. I think I got a couple from Amazon, but that's just because they were specific books. Most of these are from used bookstores, gifts from friends who were giving away books, that type of thing. There are lots of ways to get books that don't involve spending a ton of money, and I am a strong supporter of all of those ways. I'm about to be a very broke grad student who can't afford to spend all of her money on books, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna start from my most recent acquisitions to my oldest acquisitions, just because I haven't put all of them on my shelves and so they'll be easier to get out first. And I don't know what a lot of these books are about. I'm going to do my best, but I, I genuinely don't know because I haven't read most of them. So this first batch I got as a gift from a friend who was going through her bookshelves and getting rid of a bunch of books that she didn't need. And so she asked me if I wanted to go through them, and I said, of course, yes. And I got to pick out a few books. So the first one I got from her was Against Nature by who, Joris Carl Hoisman. I definitely did not pronounce that right. It's a beautiful cover. Um, a really nice Penguin classic edition. This is a classic book. I thought it was really interesting because on the back, it says it's this original novel that has one character. So it's about this one guy. He's this alien kind of aging aristocrat and it's just about him and in this luxury kind of thing. I think I think it's so interesting that it, it's just him. He's like alone at this villa and it's just about what he's doing there. It's been described as exploding like a meteorite has and has enjoyed a cult following to this day so i'm excited to pick this up i think it's gonna be cool um yeah but pretty much like every book in here i don't really know too much about it besides it's about one guy who's an alien aristocrat and just his excesses and luxuries and decadence at this isolated villa and kind of what he learns from that the next book i've actually already read so i can kind of talk about it a little bit but i would i got a copy my own copy of animal farm by george orwell i read this book about four years i just borrowed a copy from a friend it's one of her favorite books and my friend this time was giving away a copy and so i decided to pick it up it's essentially a commentary on the Russian Revolution but told almost as a fable format so there are pigs and the different classes of society are represented as different kinds of animals. It's a very interesting book, it's a very thought-provoking book and as a history student I was just like yes yes I know this but it's very cool and I do want to reread it soon. It's a nice short book but yeah I got my own copy finally. The next book I have again I don't know much about it is called Patterns of Childhood by Krista Wolf. From what I understand this is more of a memoir about a girl who grew up in Nazi Germany and she goes back to her hometown in Germany I believe with her family, her mother, her kids I think and it's talking about those difficult questions of talking about what it was like to grow up in Nazi Germany and then also trying to explain that to her kids and what that was like. 
that's what I understand. It's talking in retrospect, like looking back on that childhood experience, which I think is really interesting. This was a book that one of my friends actually read as a required reading for one of her classes last semester, and she really enjoyed it. I think she gave it a four out of five stars, and I've had it on my Goodreads since I talked to her about it back in February, I think. So I'm excited to pick this up. The next book I have, I haven't read, but it is one anticipated read. It's kind of weird copy, but my friend gave it to me for free, but it is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Frankenstein is the first science fiction book. It has been termed the first science fiction book. It is about a uh, doctor named <laughs> Dr. Frankenstein who creates a living being called Frankenstein's Monster and it's this whole idea of humanity and mortality. I haven't read it but so many people love this book and this is so many people's favorite books of all time that I'm really just excited to pick it up. I think it's gonna be really good. And the last book that I got from my friend, again, I don't know much about. It is uh, Orcs and Crake. I think that's how you say it by Margaret Atwood. I just read my first Margaret Atwood book recently for book club and it was Alias Grace and I loved Alias Grace. I have The Handmaid's Tale on my bookshelf and it is pretty high on my to be read. I really need to read it but I loved her writing style so much and just the way she paints scenes I think is so cool and so just I feel like I can see what's happening and so when my friend offered me a Margaret Atwood book I didn't know what it was about but I said I'd take it, so I'm giving it a home on my shelf. Probably won't read it in the near future, but I hope I will get to it eventually. Okay, so my next batch of books is definitely my biggest, and these are the books that I got at a used bookstore um, in my hometown using store credit. So since I'm moving, I can only bring my one bookshelf. I had another one where I kept my nonfiction and history books, generally because I'm a history student, so I have a lot of them but I really had to get my books down to one shelf. So luckily this bookstore buys back books and will give you store credit. So they bought back a whole bunch of my books. I had a ton of money in store credit and I needed to use it before I moved. I'm gonna start out with the medieval books that I got, but there are a ton, so prepare yourself. I'm so excited. So the first book, and these are my four medieval five medieval books that I got. I'm going to be starting a program in medieval studies for my master's and it's a lot more interdisciplinary than what I've been doing so far. I focus in medieval history so I really wanted to go out and get some medieval literature that I could read, kind of see what was up and what's going on with medieval literature because I know about some stuff. I've read Christine, I had a whole class, I've read Christine Dupuisan but I wanna see what else is out there. And so the first book I got, I'm actually in the middle of reading right now, and it is The Book of Marjorie Kemp by Marjorie Kemp. This is actually the oldest autobiography we have in the English language. Um, Marjorie Kemp was illiterate, but she dictated this to a scribe who took it down. She was an English mystic and a religious person. I don't think she was a nun. I'm not quite there in her story yet but she is wild. She was what she called a woman of the world, which just meant she was married, she had kids, she had like 11 kids, and she started getting visions from God and set off on this religious life, doing pilgrimages, living in a vow of chastity, which her husband was not a huge fan of, and crying a lot. Her story has been a whirlwind and crazy so far. People have already threatened to burn her at the stake, which is always fun. And I'm only on page 78. So I'm taking this pretty slowly. I'm going through, I don't know if you can see, but I'm annotating it a little bit. Again, I'm not doing a deep dive into these, um, these medieval literature pieces. I just kind of want to see what's out there. The next book I got, I've actually already read, and you'll see why because it's pretty short, and they are The Lays of Marie de France. So Marie de France was a 12th century poet, a female poet. She is the earliest known French female poet, which is very cool, and she essentially transcribed these oral tales that were told by the Bretons, and they're these courtly tales of love and romance, and she just put them down on paper. They're very fun. They're very short each, like each one's very short. There was one that was literally a page, 
and they reminded me of TikTok. <laughs> like Marie de France was TikTok before it was even a thought. Cause they're just short, they're snappy, and they're just they're just really fun and they're ridiculous. I thought it was really cool this blend of the supernatural with courtly love. I thought that was really fun. So you have one of her most famous stories where a man turns into a nightingale and a woman goes to her window every night to see the nightingale. It was very fun. This is definitely something I want to reread. I read it very quickly and because the stories are so similar, they all kind of blended together. So I'm gonna pick this one up again at some point, but it's, I mean, it's not even 100 pages really, it's really short. So the next one I got, the next two, I don't really know much about them, but the first one is Niall's Saga, which is the most well-known of the Icelandic family sagas, which were written in the 11th and 12th centuries, I believe or 13th century to 12th, 13th century in Iceland. And this tells the story of a blood feud between two families over the course of 50 years. That's pretty much all I know about it. Icelandic sagas are a big subset of medieval literature as a whole, just because we've had comparatively more survive. <laughs> and I know in the class that I'm gonna be a TA for, we're going to be reading one of the sagas. I don't think it's Niles, but since this is the most well-known and I saw it in the bookstore, I thought I'd pick it up and just kind of see what the Icelandic sagas are about. I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be fun and actually fast paced. I mean, the idea of like a blood feud and it has, and this is according to the back, dark dreams, strained prophecies, sexual slander, violent conflict, and fragile traces. And y'all said the medieval times were boring. The last medieval book I got is Marguerite de Navarre and her Heptameron. So this I know is later. So I work in like the 11th, 11th and 12th centuries. So this is a little bit later. This is in the 15th, 16th century. So early 1500s. And I know it's based on Boccaccio's Decameron. So it's these nobles, I think it's five men and five women who are isolated in this abbey because of a bridge breaking and they can't get across until it's repaired. So to pass the time, they tell each other stories and these very quickly devolved from the proper, you know, well put together formal stories into stories of promiscuous friars and inappropriate things. So it seems like it's gonna be actually pretty fun. Okay, so I moved my plant because this stack, a lot of these are new books. So I'm going to just go down the stack one by one. Um, I said I was gonna do these by early and latest acquisition. It's probably just gonna be by shelf from now on. Kind of chaotic, but it's fine. So the first two books, from this shelf that are new are both Penguin 20th Century Classic Editions, so I'll just show you them together. Don't know too much about either, but I got Summer by Edith Wharton and The Sea, The Sea by Iris Murdoch. I will talk about The Sea, The Sea first because I know more about this. I have been looking for this book everywhere. I saw it on Goodreads. I think I was just scrolling. I wanted to start reading Iris Murdoch because I had been seeing some of their works and I wanted to see what it was about and I was looking for a good place to start and the description of this just caught me and I really wanted to read it. I really wanted to find it but I wanted a used copy, you know, something cheap just in case I didn't like it. That's how I always am when I first start reading an author. I really just want a cheap, well-loved copy so I I'm not dropping a ton of money. Like if it's Jane Austen, then I will spend more money on a nice copy because I love Jane Austen and everything she writes I love. This is The Sea the Sea. So this follows Charles Arrowby in England. He retires from stage life on the West End in London to live in a coastal seaside town and write a memoir of his many numerous love affairs from his life. But nothing quite goes as expected. And the memoir that he's writing evolves into a narrative of what's happening to him at the sea, these strange supernatural encounters, the story of the woman who he is currently in a relationship with. And it just sounds very interesting. Like you, you're not, you're, I feel like I'm gonna read it and not quite sure what's real. And also this cover is absolutely beautiful. I mean, 
oh I was so happy when I found this I kept telling myself I was like if you find it in any bookstore it doesn't even matter the condition it could have been disintegrating in my hands and I still would have bought it because I've been waiting to buy it for like three months so this is it this is towards the top of my my to be read right now I'm very excited to get my hands on this and the next Penguin 20th Century Classic like I said Summer by Edith Wharton I love Edith Wharton you're going to see a lot more of her in this book haul. I don't know anything about this story. I know it's related to Ethan Frome, but I haven't read Ethan Frome yet. The Edith Wharton book that I've read is House of Mirth. So while I was at the bookstore and I had this credit, I loved House of Mirth so much. I think it's probably been one of my favorite reads of 2020 so far. I just decided I'd pick up a bunch more of her books and I'm excited to pick this up whatever it's about and going down actually my last classic right here in this stack that's new is the reef by edith wharton again i have no idea what this is about it's edith wharton i don't need to say anymore that's it so since i'm changing up the order and not doing it by most recently acquired i'm just gonna move up to this bookshelf which has a ton of my new books on it so the first one i've actually read is the little friend by donna tart this was my last book club book it was interesting it was creepy it was not my favorite donna tart book it is about a girl named harriet who one summer she's about 12 decides to solve her older brother's murder he was found hanging from a tree on mother's day when he was also about 12 I think and it's about her search in this small town in Mississippi for what happened to her brother searching for any answers in a very broken family it's like I said it's creepy it's interesting the characters are very complex and very real just like Donna Tartt does characters so well I would recommend it it's definitely something I want to reread and see if I was just not in the right headspace I feel like this would be a good Halloween read the next book that I got I actually the little friend I got from Amazon but this again is from a used bookstore and I got 100 years of solitude by Gabrielle Garcia Marquez I don't know anything about this book but I don't know if you can see but it is Oprah's book club and the winner of the Nobel Prize so it's good I think it tells the story of a single family kind of the rise and fall of this family over three generations I think it sounds really great and I'm trying to make a really conscious and active effort to read books by people of color and I think this is going to be a really great book this next book that I've picked up is actually a biography which isn't something I normally pick up to read I love listening to biographies I have audible I love listening to them I think they're my favorite thing to listen to on Audible, but I picked this up because I needed it. And it is Jane Austen, A Life by Claire Tomlin. I've actually already read this. I have a couple of tabs. I loved this biography. I think out of all of the biographies of Jane Austen that I've read, this has been my favorite so far. Writing a biography of Jane Austen is a thankless task. It is so difficult. We know so little of her inner thoughts. We don't have many letters from her because her sister burned a lot of them before her death. So Claire Tomlin did a great job of supplementing that loss with other information. So we have letters from her mother, from Cassandra, her sister, from other members of the family. She brings in, you know, financial records from other people in the family and does a good job of kind of piecing together just like the separate parts of Jane Austen's life that without her personal letters are really hard to know what she thought of her books, how she executed her business exactly. The one thing I didn't like about this book was the literary criticism. I think number one, it didn't really fit. It took up a lot of space. I mean, she would talk about each book when she got to it for about 10 pages. It wasn't very equal um, in terms of the books she talked about. She didn't talk about every single book. I just wasn't a big fan of her literary criticism, but I'm also very protective of Jane Austen and her works because I love all of them and they have a very special place in my heart. My grandfather was actually the one who introduced me to Jane Austen and so I'm very protective of it so the criticisms I didn't think were well founded but the actual biography itself I thought was really good. So I think this is my biggest chunk of new books comes from this stack which is my Penguin Black Spine classic edition so I'm gonna be going through these. All of them 
but maybe four are new. So let's go. The first one will be no surprise to anyone who's made it this far in this video, and it is The Custom of the Country by Edith Wharton. This was an Edith Wharton I was looking for particularly. When I got there, I just decided to get a bunch of her books, but I was particularly looking for this one. So I've heard that this book is actually almost a foil to House of Mirth, which uh, I loved House of Mirth so much. That book absolutely killed me. And at least the main character is a foil. So in House of Mirth, our main character is Lily Bart. And she is fallen onto hard times and is trying to rise up back in the ranks of the aristocrats in the late 19th century in New York. But she has such a strong moral compass, it prevents her from doing the sometimes deceitful things necessary to get to the top. The main character in The Custom of the Country, however, who is Undine Sprig? What a weird name. Apparently, has no trouble doing those things that Lily Bart couldn't. And she does rise her way to, a, to the top, but it is more of a be careful what you wish for type of book. And I'm really excited to read this and compare it to House of Mirth and see where they're similar and where they're different and how Edith Wharton had evolved in her writing just between these two books that are so similar. And the cover is beautiful. Oh, I love it. So the next two books I actually got at the same time and they are Jean Tomer's Kane and Nella Larson's Passing. I really wanted to get some classics by black authors and these are two of the ones that came very highly recommended to me. Passing in particular is at the top of my TBR. It is about two friends in the 1920s in New York. One of them passes as white and one of them doesn't. And they meet back years later. And it's this whole story of them reconnecting and evaluating each other's lives. The woman who's passing is married to a really racist man who would not take kindly to the fact that his wife is not white. And it seems like, re like a really interesting book. I think it was part of the inspiration for The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, which is actually my book club book for this month, which I don't have a copy of yet but I'm really interested to read it, especially in conjunction with The Vanishing Half, which is about two twins who one passes and one doesn't. And it takes a deep psychological dive at what it means to be passing. And I think that's really interesting. And the next book, like I said, is Kane by Jean Tromer. This is an interesting book. I was between getting this and another book, but I decided on this one. I really wanted to pick it because it's a mixed format. So it's prose, but then it also has, I don't know if you can see, it also has poetry. And I think just the mixing of formats is very cool. I don't know much about the actual story, but I think it kind of jumps around between the North and the South, living in Jim Crow, obviously in the 1920s in the South, and then also what it was like living in the North. So I'm excited for this book and passing. They're both really high at the top of my TBR. Uh, the next few books, I don't know anything about, so bear with me. I will read them, but I don't know what they're about right now. The first one is Picnic at Hanging Park by Joan Lindsay. So this book takes place in 1900 and it follows the lives of three or four girls who go to Apple Yard College for young ladies. They decide to have a picnic at Hanging Rock. Don't you love when you understand the title? But they never return and that's all I know about it. I don't know if people go looking for them. God, I hope they do. But it seems kind of suspenseful and kind of fun. I'm excited. I'm really excited for it actually. It's described as mysterious and subtly erotic, which I don't know how a picnic can be subtly erotic, but I'm 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 interested to see. It was also compared to Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca, which is one of my favorite books. It's actually right up there. It's Jalen's favorite book of all time. So I'm excited to see how it compares to that. If it has a similar theme, then I think I'll definitely like it. The next book is The Victim by Saw. Saul Bello could not get that out and it is about a man named Asia who his wife is out of town he's alone in New York it's hot it's the summer he decides to go to Central Park to get some air and he's accosted by another man and this other man convinces Asia that he is responsible for all of his troubles he as in Asia is responsible for all of the man's troubles and it leads Asia on this 
psychological kind of what's the word he like dissolves psychologically like he kind of becomes a psychological mess because he convinces himself that he is all the, all the reason for all of this man's problems even though they've never met before it's described as a Dostoevskian nightmare so it sounds again kind of like picnic at hanging rock just like creepy and I'm excited for it. Have never heard of the authors or the books before. I saw them in the bookstore. I kind of just picked them off. They were both beautiful copies, just like really well cared for. And I just kind of picked them off. Sounded interesting, put them in my bag. The last book on this big stack. Oof. You will have seen this in Jalen's videos. It is Don Quixote. I'm gonna read this this year. Jalen and I are gonna do a buddy read. The text is minuscule. It is like a thousand pages, but Jalen and I read the first chapter a little while ago and it sounded so good and it was so funny. So I'm excited. I don't really know what it's about. Beside, it's about a guy, I think Don Quixote obviously is the main character, who reads kind of like Arthurian romances and chivalric romances and thinks that he's a knight and goes around Spain just like pretending to be a knight. Um, it sounds very Monty Python in the Holy Grail and I'm here for it. I'm excited for it. Everyone who's read it loves it. One of my favorite videos that I've seen recently was by John Fish. I'll link it below. And he read this as part of his read every book recommended by Joe and you video and he loved this book. So I bought it <laughs> and I'm gonna read it even though big books scare me and this is a qualifies as a big book and this book I got it I again I feel bad I can't really tell you much about it I can't even tell you the plot or the main characters names it is a small world by David Lodge I've never heard of this book I've never heard of David Lodge I looked it up on Goodreads and it said it was an academic romance type thing which really intrigued me I know it was nominated for the Booker Prize I love Booker books so I picked it up and that's it that's what I got for you for this one. Guys, this is the last batch of books. Stay with me for a second. So, where do we start? We'll start with my last two Edith Wharton books that I got, and those are Ethan Frome and Selected Stories by Edith Wharton, which is in the very beautiful Barnes and Noble classics. I have all of mine. Let me tilt up so you can see all of my Barnes and Noble classics up there, and I have The House of Mirth and Age of Innocence in the Barnes and Noble Classics and I got Ethan Frome, which is this beautiful blue green. Um, and it's Ethan Frome and Selected Stories, so it has a bunch of her short stories in it, which I was interested in. There was another book at the bookstore that was just a collection of her short stories, but I thought I'd try the ones in this one before getting like a huge book of her short stories just to make sure I like them. I will, it's Edith Wharton, but I just wanna confirm. And Ethan Frome, I don't know much about it, but it's Edith Wharton, so. And then the last Edith Wharton book I got, I'm actually reading right now, and it's one of her novellas. And I just saw this copy and I thought it was beautiful. It is The Touchstone by Edith Wharton. And this is about, since I've started reading it, I can tell you a little bit. This is about a man who spurned the love of a novelist. And now that she's dead, he has a bunch of her letters and someone writes an ad in the newspaper asking if anybody has her letters to help him write her biography. And this character right now is really struggling with whether he should give them over and he's rereading them and just thinking about this woman who loved him, who he didn't love back who is now dead. Very interesting emotionally and psychologically. I really like it so far. It's really short, it's not even 100 pages, and I'm on page 22, but I'm taking my time. Her writing, I just don't know how she did it. It's just so good. Like this is, some, this is how she describes the main character of how he's kind of thinking about himself. So he's talking about the symbol of his increasing abnegations. So she says, of that perpetual pairing off that was gradually reducing existence to the naked business of keeping himself alive. I just thought that was so well written. I love it. Critics and academics think this is one of Edith Wharton's best, but it's often overlooked because it's a really small novella. So I'm excited to read it alongside all of my other Edith Wharton books. And another book that I got that I am currently reading unlike the touchstone is massive and it is 
The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. I am halfway through this, a little bit over halfway through it, and I'm torn on this book, honestly. I really like the writing. I really like the idea of it. I think it's very cool. You have historians who get these mysterious clues and go off on hunts for Dracula and start to realize that Dracula is a living presence still on Earth. He's still extant. He's still walking the Earth. And it sends him on this goose chase to Istanbul, to Romania, to, you know, everywhere. But I don't think it needed to be this long. And I don't think we need as many layers as this book has. Because essentially, it's the main character reflecting on her childhood and her experience with Dracula. And in that childhood recollection, she's reading her father's letters, who's recollecting on his life in the 50s looking for, looking for Dracula. And now in that timeline, in the dad's letters, the dad is reading letters from someone else and it's just, it gets confusing, it's too much. I feel like there's not a lot happening in the actual story. I'll finish it, but it'll, that definitely knocked it down. I was so promising, it was so good in the beginning, but we're just getting, it's like Inception, we're just getting too deep and we're about to go into limbo. The next book I got is a beautiful vintage international copy and it is Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. This book has one of the best flops I've ever seen. I judge a book solely by its flops if I'm getting a used copy. If it doesn't bend back like that without breaking the spine, I don't want to see it. Uh, this book I don't know much about. It was published in 1952. The narrative, I believe, talks about race in the U.S. and takes you on a ride across the racial divide in the 1950s in the United States. That's what I know about it. Again, this came highly recommended to me and I'm excited to read it. And Jalen has it too, so... Maybe will buddy read it? We'll see. I also got, this book has been on my TBR for a long time. I got The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco. This is one of the most well-known and one of the most famous medieval historical fiction books, which I'm trying to read more of just because I love the medieval period. It's what I study and I should read more fiction about it. This is set in the 14th century in an abbey or a monastery. Oh yeah, it's in an Italian Franciscan abbey and that's all I know about it. I think somebody dies and one of the friars has to go do some investigating and try to find out who did it. It sounds like an interesting combination of Sherlock Holmes with kind of just like a normal historical fiction set in the medieval period and that sounds super interesting. It's so well known that the author wrote another book about how he researched this book. I've heard in terms of historical fiction nothing's going to be perfectly accurate because it is fiction and authors always have liberties that they can take in their fiction and I'm fine with that but I've heard the accuracy is actually pretty good in this so I'm excited to read it. It's really big. <laughs> I'm scared of big books, but I got it anyways. I'm gonna read it at some point. Probably not before I move because I'm moving in less than a month, but sometime I'm going to read it. This is the last book, I think, which is crazy because I don't think this is a great book to end on because I don't know anything about it. It is The Door by Magda Sazbo, and Magda Sazbo is a Hungarian author. This was translated from the Hungarian into English by Len Ricks, and I don't know much. This seems like it is a psychological thriller about the relationship between a writer who has suddenly found success and her housekeeper who essentially runs everything and kind of what happens when the writer finally finds success and the relationship, the dynamic changes. It sounds interesting. I really was sold by one of the blurbs on the back. The description is fine. It basically just tells you there are these two women and they live very different lives. The writer suddenly finds success and what happens? We don't know. That was pretty much it. But this blurb, all it says is, I've been haunted by this novel. Sazba's lines and images come to my mind unexpectedly and with them powerful emotions. It has altered the way I understand my own life a work of stringent honesty and delicate subtlety. And that's from the New York Times. And I read that blurb and I was like, ooh, I was like, ooh, that's spicy. And I need it. So I picked it up. <laughs> and that's it. I don't even know how many books that I just went through. I guess I will count them when I'm editing. Like I said, 
I did not go out of my way to spend a ton of money on these books. Out of all of these, I think five were purchased from Amazon. Maybe, like maximum five. I supported used bookstores and I got books from friends. You don't need to spend a ton of money to get books. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great week.